But when you're thinking, you notice you're thinking. That's what awakeness is. That's what presence is all about. Not just in formal meditation, right? Because we're practicing something that eventually we intend to be natural. We intend to be the way we are. We intend to be that at some point, paying attention will be, have been practiced sufficiently that it will be the way that you're being, is that you're attentive, that you're aware, that you're noticing. And really, th that is all this is about. That's all this is about. You know, uh, I, I said one of the in one of the other classes that what this is really about is to simply be aware of what's happening. That's all. This is not, you know, so if you, if this, if you turn this into some magical, mystical, religious thing, you know, and all that jazz, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of beautiful reality involved in religion and prayer and, you know, all of that, right? But we don't, you don't need to go there. If, if you want to go, go there and be, you know, be, a, a, be interested in Buddhist ritual or Catholicism or Christian ritual or the Kabbalah or Judaism, fine, wonderful, beautiful, nothing wrong with any of that, right? But this, as a psychologist, I want to be clear with you that, that the purpose of meditation need not be, get involved in anything other than the simple matter of being awake. Simple matter of being awake. And it doesn't involve the idea that if you're awake, this is a big misunderstanding. It doesn't involve the idea that if you're awake, you will have succeeded in being in control of your life. This is one of the things the personality is, is up to. You know, the personality, the personality is interested in meditation. Personality is interested in this business of being awake. Why? So we can be better at being a personality. It can be a, a more powerful personality, right? A more relaxed personality. A personality that can have the, get, have the edge, get the edge, right? And the thing about it is, is that it's not that, that those things don't happen, but the irony and the paradox is if, if, if what you're doing here is to make those things happen, they won't happen. If what you're doing here is to simply practice experiencing what's already the case, which is, which is your awareness, you, uh, the awareness, not even your awareness. You know, we, we, we say your awareness because we're, um, kind of going along with uh, the situation that you find yourself in. Well, if, I, if, I, if I say your awareness, right? So if I say your awareness, I'm, I'm, I'm giving credibility to the lie. If I say your awareness, I'm saying there is a you there other than the awareness. And one of the things that meditation makes possible is the discovery of the truth. And the truth is there ain't no you there other than the awareness. The idea that you are aware is a misunderstanding and it's the source of all of the problems that we suffer from. So in, in the practice of meditation, right, whether, you're, whether you notice it or not, whether you, it comes to you as a clear discovery, whether you notice it or not and whether, whether it comes to you as a clear discovery, the practice does involve your experiencing yourself as awareness because when you move attention from the thinking activity to being aware of the body breathing, you're being yourself now. There is no body. See, here's the deal. When you move your attention from the thinking activity to awareness of the body breathing, there is no body who is aware. This is the this is, the, the, this is what this discovery is that can be had. When you move attention from the thinking activity, the thinking activity is where you think who you are, where you, you know, where you, who you have it that you are shows up in thinking. Once you move away from that, there is no thought that tells me who I am now. There's just awareness in the body breathing. That is a threat to the concept, self-concept. That's a threat to the self-image, right? I say self-image and I say self-concept because 
other than the concept and the image, there is, there's nothing there. It's just a thought process. This is what it is that, that, that we're bearing witness to in the practice of formal meditation. We're bearing witness to the truth. The truth is, there is no you meditating. So through the practice at some point, right, the, the evidence will reveal that to you. Do you know what I mean? Even regardless of what you think, right, the evidence is when you are not thinking that you're a person and a body, the evidence will reveal to you that what is actually there is awareness. There is no body aware. There is no body meditating. All that's happening when you're meditating, if you really relax and allow yourself to be alert and present, all that's happening when you're meditating is meditation. Has that ever occurred to you? All that's happening when you're meditating is meditation. There's nobody meditating. When you are the awareness of the body breathing, who are you? When you are the awareness of the body breathing, who are you? You know, if you go to answer that question, it'll, it'll flip you into thinking and then you'll answer, right? But, you know, if you've been doing this for a while now, you, you have come across the, the teaching and the, and the concept that that thought answer, what you think is true, is not actually the case. So, I, this is the question I have. Under a stressful situation where personality and... Um, where personality comes up and the, and the voice in your head s dominates awareness. Other than being present to it and, and, and going to the breath of the, of the belly, what, what else? I mean, sometimes it'll dominate you for, for a day or two, just back and forth. Mm -hmm. What else can you do? To, to maintain, to be conscious, to, to stay in consciousness. Mm -hmm. Okay, good question. It's a good question, really, because it really points to something that is an important understanding about all this, and that is that, you can leave it on. Just you, leave it down yeah, like leave, that. Yeah, yeah. And that is that, that what this is about is not being in control. What this is about is not changing anything. This is about presence, okay? So when something happens that stimulates an upset, right? Yes. Especially if the upset is big, especially if it's intense, right? And, and we all have that type of material in our system, right? So when, you get, uh, when an upset gets triggered, and when the upset gets triggered, you, you go right into a mental state, right? You go right into identifying with the thinking, right? You go right into identifying with the feeling, right? And not only do you go into the, uh, that identity, but there's a, compuls there's a compulsive way that it is. It's compelling, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like, comes, it comes in fast, right? And right. takes over. And you lose your grounding, you lose your centeredness, you lose your ability to, to be present to this, right? You're in the mess, you're in the story, you're in the drama, right? So the question is, what can I do? Hmm? Is there anything I can do in that situation? Yes. And the answer is no. <laughs> and the reason that the answer is no will probably be different than you think it is, right? The reason the answer is no is because the idea that you ever do anything is an illusion. So to, th to, 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 to try and think about what to do in this situation is just more of the same, right? It's just more of the misunderstanding that there, that there is a me that can do things and the me that can do things wants to know what to do to not suffer. Okay? So I'm, I'm thinking my way through this thing, sort of. Well, only if you are. In other words, <laughs> that, see, because the, re the real thing that I want to point out here is there, it's not a matter of doing. What we're practicing in meditation is not how to do life different, or what to do, or how to be better at doing, right? No, that's not this. This is about being, not doing, you see. But, what, but the, the habit and the, and the conditioning is, so, is, is still there, and it will have you focus on doing. Why? Because you've been conditioned, the, the, the primary 
uh, uh, conditioning that we have all gone through is to be a doer. That's the primary conditioning. To be a physical body makes you an action figure, an action figure, a doer, right? Your orientation in this world has been an orientation to be a doer. So, so naturally, that's the first thing that's going to come up is what do I do? I, I want to be, I want to be more effective and more powerful and more um, able to deal with upset, to deal with suffering. So, you know, what can I do, especially when there's a major upset, right? And my, and my, my answer to that is that you, there's nothing you can do, but it's the possibility that we're practicing is not about doing, it's about who are you being at that time. And if who you're being at that time is the witness, is the awareness, then the idea of doing anything to change what's happening doesn't, it's not the same. It's not, it's, it, that's no longer necessarily relevant. The idea of doing anything to change what's happening is no longer necessarily relevant, necessarily relevant because now you're experiencing your ability to be with it, right? Including the, the being with it includes the internal reality, not just what's happening or in the world, right? To be with the thoughts, to be with the feelings in the body, to be with the emotions, right? And this presence is, is the key to to what we're doing here. We don't see, uh, I'm gonna repeat this, I've said it, uh, I must have said it a million times here, but there's, you can't say this enough, right? Please allow yourself to let this in as best you can. There is nothing you can do about the thought process. You have no control over the thought process. There's nothing you can do about the emotional experiences Nothing. They're happening by themselves, just like the thought activity is happening by itself, right? When you identify with it, you have questions like, what can I do about it, right? When you don't identify with it, it's, that's, it's just what's happening. It's just what's happening. And, and when you're being who you are, when you're being the awareness, the significance of the question changes because now I don't feel the need to really do anything. I don't feel a need to really change anything because I'm experiencing a, 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 a state of well-being regardless of the circumstances. I'm experiencing a state of peace regardless of the circumstances. I'm experiencing, a, 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 even I'm experiencing happiness while an upset is occurring. Happiness. This happiness is the, you know, there's a saying uh, you know, that comes from the, I, guess, I think it's in the Hindu teachings, you know. Uh, and the saying is, uh, Sat Chit Ananda. And it's a, it's a famous saying because you could actually think of the Sat Chit Ananda as the application of presence, the application of meditation. Sat Chit Ananda. Sat means existence, okay, we're here, right? Chit is awareness. Right? And Ananda is happiness or uh, you know, just being elated in a sense about the experience of being alive. Right? <laughs> so anytime anything is happening in, in your world and you go through Sat Chit Ananda, right? that brings you into being. Right? Existence, spiritual existence, happiness, Sat Chit Ananda. Okay, so the, so the solution to what you presented is to is simply in the, in the midst of upset to be alert, be aware, see what's happening. Now, that's not gonna change what's happening, right? But it's gonna allow you to experience yourself as the witness to it rather than the one it's happening to. That's the shift. Okay, and that shift, as I have also said here many, many times, when the light of awareness shines on that upset, right, that upset starts to dissolve. 
So it's not a matter of trying to change it. Everything is already changing all the time. It's a matter of being present to what's happening in such a way that the way it changes, changes. So the presence to the experience is, is all that's necessary for you to, be, once you wake up in your life, once you're awake in your life, the living of your life becomes a process that resolves the issues that are there in the process of life itself, because you're there. It's that simple. You're actually there for your life. You're actually there witnessing what's going on, right? But prior, prior to that, see, the thing, to, the thing you want to get about your question is, you know, don't forget, prior to your practicing meditation, prior to your understanding these concepts and teachings, right, there were no possibilities. No. You just suffered, and not only do you, did you suffer, but you created a story about it. it you, you had a dramatic, made it into a drama in which you could be right and others could be wrong, in which you could dominate and avoid domination, right, in which you could sing your country and western song. Right, because that's if you listen to country and western music, right? It's it's all about having your feelings hurt, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, what we're talking about here is is, is a very simple matter. It's it's a, and 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 the simplicity of it is, is is simpler than you can imagine. And the reason it's simpler than you can imagine is because what we're talking about doing here is nothing. Who we're talking about being here is nothing. And, and those two things happen to be consistent with reality, with the truth. There is no doer, right? So, you, so d d doing is not something that you need, you, you need to focus your attention on anymore. What, what will I do? Yeah, through the practice of meditation, if, if you're practicing and focusing on things correctly, that question changes. It's not what, what, what can I do or what should I do? No, it's who am I being? That's the question. Who am I being? And when you recognize, and you, when you're upset, the answer to that question is always the same. It has to be the same. You know, you you have to be the the one that's upset because you're the one that is the you are the thinking one. You know, the one that's upset. You're the thinking one, and the thinking one thinks about everything all the time. Thinks about the way it should be. Thinks about the way it shouldn't be. Thinks about what you don't like, what you do like, what you want, what you don't want. So once you're in that world, suffering is there, has to be there, because that world has you be separate from the rest of humanity and separate from your own life, separate from your own life, separate from your own reality, your own emotional process. So we're talking about the discovery that's available through the practice of formal and informal meditation, and that discovery is the discovery of reality, discovery of the truth, the discovery that you don't have to worry about discovering that who you thought you were isn't real. You don't have to worry about that like some, that's something, there's something terrible about that, right? Because what you're discovering has always been the case. It's not, you know, when you wake up to the truth of yourself and you discover that the personality doesn't actually exist, you know, nothing changed at that time. You just started seeing the way it's always been. You know, when people, when, when people have an awakening experience, one of the common things that happens for them is they say, this is it? What do you mean? This is all, I've always been, I've, this awareness has always been here. That's not new, right? Well, yeah, it's always been here and that's not new, but you haven't, you know, you haven't been being that awareness. You've been being a made up personality instead, and you've been giving that your energy, giving that your attention, living your life as that. And when you live your life as that, the conditioning and the script and the story are very important, right? Because that makes all the difference. You want to have a good story. You want things to go right in that situation. The freedom is the free, as Muji used to say, the freedom is not freedom for you, it's freedom from you. And when you experience the freedom that's available, when you stop identifying yourself as a physical body and a personality, then you know what peace is. And, and that peace is available at all times, right? Because who you are is who you are at all times, right? The only thing that changes is where your attention is, right? Whether your attention goes back into identifying with the thought process. Once you're identifying with the thought process, 
you're back in the illusion, back in the idea that just because you think you're a person that you are. Do you understand that that's like pretty crazy? Just because you think you're, if, if, you, if, you, thought, if you thought you were a, a chipmunk, right, you'd go get some help. <laughs> but if you think you're a human being, that's the same thing as thinking you're a chipmunk, but you don't get some help because everybody thinks you're a chipmunk. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, if everybody thinks they're a chipmunk, then everybody's a chipmunk, whether they are or not. You understand? This is true about everything else, right? This is true. This is the condition that humanity is suffering from because they share ignorance. Human beings share ignorance. They, they share what they think is true with one another and have it be the absolute reality. So there's no question about it. There's no question about that, right? Even though something must be wrong because living in that reality right causes stress suffering physical disease early death right conflict all the shit <laughs> that we deal with all day long right so if that's the truth that's a pretty sick reality right if that's the truth then we should be asking you know what the hell's going on here if that's what's possible and available for me as a human being that's a good question. And that might lead you to ask, who am I? It might lead you to ask, what really is happening here? And if it's possible to come to a recognition of that, to see the truth, then it also is possible to experience the reality of who you are. And upon having that experience, even if it's a glimpse, even if it's a, for, if it's a foretaste, upon having that experience, right, you're, you're introduced to the truth. You're introduced to the truth. And upon having that experience, there's no way you can't want that because compared to the everyday, ordinary experience that most of us are having, that's a, that's a party, you know? It's like one woman said who, who woke up, uh, Angelo interviewed one woman who woke up and she expressed that she said, every moment of my life, I experience every moment of my life like I just won the lottery. Every moment of my life, like I just won the lottery. Wow. So that is really the experience of aliveness. You know what I mean? That's the experience of excitement. That's the experience of fulfillment, right? It's such a wonderful thing to come in contact with the truth when the truth is that you don't need anything. Right? It's such a wonderful experience to come in contact when the, with the truth when the truth is there's only there's a, there's a, a relatively limited amount that there is that can be said about this. And, the re and one of the reasons that's the case is because even that's not true, right? So I tell the best lies I can come up with here, right? But they're lies because they're conceptual, right? And one of the things that you need to understand if you want to realize the possibility here is that the possibility is non-conceptual. You've got to get to the edge of the reality that's conceptual and then step off. That step off into the unknown, right? Mm -hmm. And and for a lot of people, there there may there will inevitably be a fear experience about that letting go. You know, yeah. it's like dying. You know, letting go of holding on to being alive, like that, right? So fear will come up, right? And the thing about that is that you need not be afraid of the fear. You need not be afraid of the fear. It's possible to experience the fear and stay present and be grounded, right? And if you do that and you experience the fear, the fear will last until it is done, right? And if you did step off from the conceptual reality into the non-conceptual reality, if you did get what Mu is, if you want to look at it in the Zen context, right? Then after the fear stops, right, what is there? What is there? Space.